Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. And welcome to the ultimate guide on drying flowers. Here is our itinerary for this evening or whatever time of day you're in. You may skip around to whatever sections strike your fancy, but if you watch the entire thing, you will get something so spectacular and special, something I like to call my thanks and gratitude. Because let me be upfront with you, this video is a doozy, so grab your snackies. But the amount of info on drying flowers that is contained in this video is ridiculous. So let's just dive right in. Okay, so today I thought we could kind of go over every method of drying flowers that I've ever really done. Uh, because I feel like I've done it in separate videos. Like I've done, you know, like a project with drying flowers and I've done like some specific method. But I've never, I don't think I've ever done like a compiled video showing you guys and like comparing what each method looks like when you dry a flower that way. So I thought we could kind of go over four different methods of drying flowers and then you guys could like kind of pick what is best for like whatever project you're doing, like whatever textures you might like. Um, if you want to dry them flat, if you want to dry them like still full in like 3D. We're going to do two methods where they're kind of like 3D still, not flattened. And then we're going to do two where they are flattened and then you guys can choose and pick. Right? I would want that. You do it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, so I don't have the bouquet of flowers anymore because honestly, we already did everything. So here's a shot of me back in time when I had this bouquet of flowers and I think I danced around with them. So I think it's just, just watch this clip. All right, so the four methods that we're gonna be doing are, I think what I did was I got like all the same flowers. How many did I do? Four. I got four, wait, no. I got one, two, three, four, five flowers. And did four different types. Okay. Yes, and did four different types. Can't numbers. <laughs> I got five different flowers and we're gonna do four different methods. So the four methods that I'm gonna be doing are we're gonna take those five flowers and I'm going to like tie them up, hang them upside down. We're gonna see what that looks like. Then we're gonna do the micro flur, we're gonna do silica gel, and putting them in books. So those are the four methods that we're gonna do. I think we should just get started. Yeah. Eh? Eh? Yeah? For <laughs> sure. Started? Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right, drying flowers in a book. Here we go. This is the book that I'm using. It's just an old cookbook, but the pages are what's important because the pages are just like regular paper. They're not like plasticky pages. Do not use books with plasticky pages. Your flowers will mold. So for the wax flower, it's super simple. I'm just cutting little stems off and I'm just laying them on the page and I'm gonna press it flat and that's literally it just for the wax flower. Once they're all in, I'm just closing the book and I'm gonna give it a good press. And then I'm gonna open it up to a brand new page. This is the anemone, oh my God. So I just cut it off as short as I can, like as close as I can get to the petals without you know, ruining the entire flower. And you'll see that I did get pretty close. So now we're just going to put it face down on the book and that's kind of it. There's a large, like thick center so I do give it a good press once I close it, but don't worry, it's gonna be okay. On a brand new page, we are going to do the spray roses. So for these, it's kind of the same as the anemone, only we're gonna open them up a little bit. So I'm cutting them off as close as I can get to the flower, and I, I got real close. So for these, I very gently, very carefully peel the petals open and kind of like fan them out one at a time. So I don't like smush the flower. I'm really just peeling and pulling those petals outward and fanning them out. I don't think that you could dry like a rosebud just like flat without opening it up this way. So once it is fanned out and completely open, I do put it face down and try, when I do this, I try to 
make sure that it's completely flat and no petals are kind of like covering the center and then we're gonna move on to another one so I'm just kind of doing the same thing working those petals out like opening them up and fanning them out these spray roses weren't super thick but if you want to have a better chance of it not rotting in the book you can take petals out of the flowers and then press them because when you take petals out you're taking moisture out which helps the flower dry much much easier i do that most of the time but these weren't like too thick so it was fine the way that it was so i'm just pressing them both face down in the book and then we're going to give it a good press and move on to the next flower so now we are on to one of our tulips and i was not sure if this was going to press well uh, but same as the other flowers I'm cutting it at the stem and I'm getting as close to the like petals as I can get without ruining the flower and then I did I did this uh, I peeled it open and uh, pressed it flat it amazingly spoiler alert it amazingly works most of the time with tulips they their petals are so thick that they kind of just fall apart not fall apart but they break easily um, so I was able to like open this one all the way so I am slowly and carefully um, pressing it down with my with my fingers kind of like working those petals to make sure that they're flat if you've never been able to flatten a tulip this way do not feel bad I feel like this was like one in a million chances that I got this to actually flatten properly so we're closing the book on that one and giving it a good press. We're going to get a new page. Here is, oh my God, just these roses were stunning. So same as all the others, cutting it off as close as I can to the flower. So this one has so many petals. It is so thick. It is so ruffly, so beautiful. So since it is so thick, that means it has a ton of moisture, which means I need to take some petals out. I've seen people get upset when I do this and I have to. I mean, if you want to press roses, if you want to press thick flowers in books and there are other methods of drying that where this is kind of required in my mind, in my opinion, um, but I, I have to take some moisture out. I have to take some petals out and it does not, especially when you're flattening it, it does not change the look of the flower in the end because it's flat. And you're getting all of these other petals that you could also work with. So you're kind of like extending the purpose of one flower. So we've taken a lot of moisture out of that rose and I think it's gonna properly dry much better than it would have if we didn't. So now we're gonna take those petals that we took out and we're gonna press them as well. And you can just kind of scatter these around a page, make sure there's none on top of each other. They all have their own space. And with that, all of our flowers are in the books. And since this book is so jam-packed, I am taking a few rubber bands just to make sure and like keep this closed. Make sure it stays shut and it really squishes those flowers down so they can properly dry. And now we are on to our next method, which is hanging them upside down. This method is super simple and basically you just tie them up and hang them on the wall and let them air dry, like naturally dry upside down. So doing this, you are going to have your flowers sort of like close up because you're hanging them upside down. So we're just gonna take some string, tie them up and make sure when you tie these that you tie them really tight because the stem as they dry get really skinny and they can fall out like as they're drying. It happened to me. So when you tie them up, make sure you're tying them really tight and then you can just hang them up on the wall and leave them there until they're dry. These dried for about six days, by the way. And then on to our third method, which is drying them in silica gel. So this is the silica gel that I use. The brand is Activa. I think I got this bag off of Amazon because I needed it really quick, but they also have it at Michael's. So what I'm doing first is pouring a small layer of silica gel on the bottom, and I am just using like a plastic food container. Once you have a small layer of silica gel on the bottom, you can start putting your flowers in. So kind of the same way that we did with the book drying, I am gonna cut it off right at the flower, like right close to the petals. And then we're gonna take some petals out because again, there's a lot of moisture in here and I want this to dry properly. So I am taking a few petals out of the very center so that I can see the center. And then I took some out of like the back layers as well to cut down on moisture. So now we're gonna move on to our anemone. Oh my God. So 
cutting it off the same as all of the other ones as close as I can to the petals and then since this is just good as it is I think I took one petal out to make sure that the center was really visible but you can just kind of nestle this into your bottom layer of silica gel very gently and then later we're gonna pour silica gel on top of everything but first we're gonna move on to the spray roses so for these I do wish I had opened one you know like flared out the petals the same way that we did for the book drying but I did keep both of them as rose buds instead and they still came out pretty cute when you're drying flowers in silica gel you want to make sure that they're not touching each other so this is kind of all I can pack onto this first layer so I'm taking the bag I love that this is like a small bag because I like to do this method of kind of like pulling the petals up and g like gently and slowly pouring little bits of silica gel on top of them like slowly so that it can like fill in every like little nook and cranny in the flower because we want this to dry properly we got to get all the silica gel like in every little corner of each of the flowers especially these like bigger roses it can be difficult so that's why I do it slowly and I kind of peel up the petals and make sure that it gets everywhere so now that we've got silica gel in every nook and cranny of these flowers I am just gonna cover them completely now in silica gel and also when I work with silica gel I am wearing gloves and I do wear a full face respirator all right so now that we have a little bit of room in this container now that we've covered some of these flowers I am going to take the tulip cut it off at the base of the petals and then I left this one closed but what I did do was take the silica gel and I gently poured some inside because I wanted to make sure that this flower really dried out and let me tell you it did um, so I put a little bit of silica gel on the inside and then I'm just going to nestle it into the bed of silica gel that's in there so now we've got our wax flower this is super simple I just cut it off so that it could fit nicely inside and then I just nestled it into the silica gel and then we are going to take the rest of the silica gel and cover everything completely I don't know how but the amount of silica gel that was in this bag was perfect I did cram them all into one container and I will say I more recommend having like a bigger container and letting them have their space rather than drying them all on top of each other like this but it did end up working and everything was totally fine but it is easier when you have like a bigger flat container and you can like spread them out and now we are on to our very last method which is drying them in the microflure which is a microwave flower press I am in love with this thing this thing saved my life many times all right maybe not my life but it this thing is amazing so we're gonna start with our full rose and like other methods I am going to be taking some petals out because I want this to have the best chance of drying and I feel like you're probably tired of hearing me say this but we're gonna take some petals out of the very center so that we can see the very center really well and then I'm also gonna take some petals out from the back petals not the very last layer but like in between kind of layers where you're not even gonna be able to tell since this is one of our flat methods uh, you're not really even gonna be able to tell that I took petals out especially from like the you know the middle sections so taking petals out is kind of a delicate process I kind of just get in there grab one of the petals <laughs> it's delicate get in there um, so I just kind of take the petals and gently pull them out make sure you're not ripping make sure you're not grabbing too many at once and this is what it looks like after I have kind of taken some petals out it's a lot thinner and a lot easier to dry this way so I'm just kind of putting it flat on the microflure which the microflure has like two plastic pieces on the outer part and then on the inside it's like two pieces of sort of felt and then two pieces of like thin fabric uh, so you kind of just sandwich them in the middle and then I'm just gonna reclamp it get all four clamps on all the sides and then I'm gonna stick it in the microwave don't make fun of my microwave I literally don't care <laughs> uh, so I usually do 30 seconds each time and I take the flour out each time as well so I don't just like microwave it back to back I take it out each time I microwave it and I mean I fully unpack these so I will take the flower out and like peel it off of the fabric which it is super soft when you like first microwave it so you do have to be really careful and gentle with it but I highly recommend doing this like taking it 
out and like peeling it off of the fabric each time. And also you'll see there that I just kind of moved it. I had it in the center at first and I recommend moving it. So don't let it dry just like in one spot the whole time because it has a higher chance in my experience of burning. So I really recommend peeling it out like each time and then moving it to a different spot. So this was the second microwave session and I peeled it out. So now I'm gonna put it back in because I feel like it's still not completely dry. So I've moved it to a different spot on the microfleur, reclamping it, and I'm gonna get it in the microwave for a third time. So it is back out now and we're going to peel it out for the last time. And this is kind of the comparison of before and after you microwave it in the microfleur. And now we're on to the anemone. Look how stunning. I also wanted to show you like how thick the very center of these flowers can be because it thick. Uh, so all I'm doing is I'm just going to put this face down on the microfleur and we're just going to press it in between the fabric and then the little felt thing and then the plastic. We're going to clamp it together and put it in the microwave for 30 seconds. I do this for all of my flowers and I do like 30 second intervals. Again, taking it out in between and I did more than one session in the microwave for the rest of these flowers that I'm gonna show you, but for the sake of not boring you, uh, I spared you. So we will go over everything at the end of the video, like how many times I put it in the microwave, but each session is 30 seconds and I peel it off in between each one. And here's the before and after. So next up is the little spray rose. So I have taken some petals out of the center so that we can see the very center of this flower. It was really to cut down on moisture and so we could see the center. So I'm making sure it's completely flat on the fabric and then we're gonna press it in between the felt and the plastic, clamp it together and get it in the microwave. And again, I do 30 seconds in the microwave each time and peel it out in between each session in the microwave. So we are taking it out now, unclamping it and taking everything apart and we're gonna carefully peel the fabric up and then I'm also going to peel the flower off of the fabric and this is the before and after. Now we're on to the tulip and it's literally the same exact process. I'm gonna cut it off right at the base of the petals and we're gonna spread it out. It did also spread out like the other ones did. I'm still so surprised that these tulips were able to spread out the way that they did. So I'm just kind of spreading it out, fanning out the petals and using my fingers to carefully like spread out the petals. And then I'm gonna carefully put the fabric and the felt and the plastic on top, clamp it, get it in the microwave. You know the process by now. And now we're on to the wax flower, which is the most simple out of all of these. I really just take it and I press it onto the microfleur, like the fabric, and I press it in between all the layers, like kind of just as they are. I don't like prep them or do anything to them. I kind of just put them in and then microwave them. And this is how they come out, the before and after. Welcome back to the future or the present, the current times. So we're gonna go over the four different ways of drying flowers that we did. And we're gonna start with the one where we hung them upside down. And honestly, I didn't think that these were gonna dry in time because we started this a week ago. The tulip was the only one that didn't like fully dry, but on, it's, it's really just like the stem that didn't fully dry. The petals definitely, well, they still kind of feel a little bit soft, but they definitely dried kind of funky, but I like it because it's like, it's got pizzazz, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so these flowers hanging upside down have been hanging upside down for six days. So this is what the tulip looks like after six days of just kind of hanging upside down. I didn't do anything else to it. Now we're gonna move on to the crusty, the dusty. <laughs> she is crust queen. 
the stem and all. Anyway, so this is what the anemone is looking like. It's really crusty, but you know what? Your girl loves texture. And I love how this looks because the stem is like, you know? Also the petals, if you look like super close, they kind of remind me of like tarantula legs. Ooh, Because yeah. they're hairy. Yeah. You know? This has like a spooky vibe. Yeah, you know? it does, for sure. Um, you obviously can't see the center anymore. It did kind of close up and get pretty crusty, but you know what? I love it. I think it's beautiful. Yeah. I knew the wax flower was going to be totally fine because it's literally just like a stick. Honestly, the little purple pla purple flowers did close up, uh, but that's it. The little bulbs look cute. It's cute. Like everything stayed green and purple. All right, and then the spray roses, stunning. <laughs> Stunning. Again, the texture is like my favorite. I love crunchy flowers. I love when they just like... You know? Yeah. So yeah, this one, I mean, these were super tight when we hung them upside down. So they kind of just stayed that way. They didn't necessarily close. They just stayed closed the way that they were. But the color is so pretty. I feel like these are basically the exact color that they started as, right? Yeah. Only this time with drying them upside down, we get this like crunchy texture that's super, super pretty. <laughs> the freaking colors. Yeah. They, they just, I mean, they got, definitely got darker because I think these roses were lighter. They, were, they had more like pink to them. The texture is like incredible and my favorite thing in the entire universe. I love when roses do this. They get like crunch and the tips, like the very edges of their petals get like super, super crinkly and like jagged. So when you dry stuff upside down like this, I feel like nine times out of ten, you're probably going to keep most of its color. It's going to darken like this. And honestly, I think any way that you dry flowers, it's going to darken or change color at least a little bit. And we're going to move on to the ones that we put in this book. What I usually do when I put flowers in books, in between the time frame that I have them in the book, I try to open up the book and like move the flowers from the page that they're on to a different page. It doesn't happen all the time, but if you leave them on the same page, the entire time that they're drying, sometimes they'll rot in there and kind of get like moldy and yucky because all the moisture is just, you know, it's just sitting there on those pages. So I usually try to move them to a dry page after a little while. So that is what I did. So like in the middle of the week, I opened up the book and moved the flowers to different pages. The spray roses are still a little bit moisty they're a little just a little like I can feel how cool you know what actually people always ask me like how can you tell if a flower is fully dry so the way that I kind of tell is like if I pick it up and it feels kind of cool because I feel like a completely dry flower doesn't it doesn't feel cool like that like it's got moisture in it it feels brittle and just like bone dry also another way that i am able to tell if a flower is completely dry is i'll hold it like this especially if you're drying them flat you can hold them up and if they start to sort of droop like this one is then it's not dry like if it's completely dry it's gonna stay you know completely flat when you hold it up like this you can see like right here the flower is still very soft. I'm able to kind of like manipulate it a little bit, like move it around. I shouldn't be able to do that. So it is like flopping a little bit, you know, like doing this, you can tell that it's still very soft. You're not going to like when the flower is completely dry, it's not going to be super soft like that. It's going to stay completely flat. So this one is actually a little further along in the process. So holding it up, it doesn't really bend. It doesn't kind of like, you know, fall over a little bit. Because if it does that, <laughs> Sean's like melting behind the camera. Um, Because if it does like a sort of this, then there's still moisture in it. But if it stays like rigid and flat, then it should be pretty good. You want to know what one of the most perfect flowers to dry flat is? Anemone. <laughs> They dry like an absolute dream when you dry them flat. Like they're so spectacular. This feels pretty dry. So the petals on these flowers are pretty thin. So they're kind of easier to dry. What's crazy is the center. Like the yeah. center of these flowers when, you know, they're just bloomed. They're so freaking thick. So you would think like, oh, that's not going to dry very well. They do. Like it, the center is like so cool. It's honestly one of my favorite parts 
of drying these flowers and also the petals are like they have like a sheen to them they're like kind of shiny so drying these in books super like one of my favorites so the rose like the bigger rose definitely not dry yet so when i hold it up you'll see how flappy and like drooped it is that definitely means that it is not dry yet and that's kind of what i was trying to show you with the spray roses but this one definitely you can tell if your flower looks like this and also like feel it just like kind of put your hands on it it's cool oh yeah when it feels kind of cold like that it's definitely not dry and it still has moisture in it and obviously the like major flap that it's got going on definitely not dry but it's on its way it's doing pretty cool things look how beautiful so this is what the rose is looking like after six days trying to draw trying to it's doing its best drying in the book and then the, the tulip you guys oh my god i'm probably not gonna be able to hold it up so here's a close-up shot of it since these petals are so thick and they're kind of waxy it does take a while for it to dry and also the center holds so much moisture for a tulip the petals were kind of like pink but now they're red drying in the book is super pretty and again when you dry things like over long periods of time like this um you know especially in books you're definitely gonna like have color changes we're gonna move on to the wax flower and this is what they're kind of looking like after being dried in the book for six days so i feel like drying these flat is where it's at because when you like flatten them out, they don't close up the way that they did when you hang them upside down or when you leave them in a vase. They will like close up and kind of get like a little crunchy. It makes the flower petals like super, super pretty and nothing like closes up. It keeps its color like super well, still purple and green. Basically looks exactly as it did. So now we're going to move on to the ones that we dried in the microflur. When I dry flowers in the microflur, immediately after i decide that it's done i immediately put them in a book because they start to sort of curl and i don't want them to completely like dry that way because if you let them just curl and like sit there and then they cool off and they're just curled like that you try to flatten it and it's probably gonna like break the petals so i usually get a book take the flowers that i dry in the microflor and put them immediately in the book to make sure that they stay flat and they cool off flat when you dry with the microflur it's literally like instant this is the larger rose and it dried like an absolute dream i feel like the fabric did something weird to it you'll probably notice like the sort of texture it's not texture but the pattern of like the colors on the rose kind of remind me of like watercolor or something it looks so pretty so holding this one up from the center like that it is completely flat let's see what else we have so beautiful yeah like so beautiful peachy colors like beautifully faded into like yellow the texture is really pretty it's completely flat you know it's not bending or anything completely dried beautiful stunning look at it yeah. look at it look at it this is the tulip is she not spectacular isn't it so so pretty completely flat and when you hold it like this it's not like bending or anything it's it basically is like like a thin brittle delicate piece of paper the tulip at the start was kind of pink peachy and now it's like orange and these are the little wax flowers that we dried in the microflora they basically look the exact same as drying them in the book the only difference is they're instant instant dry there's not much to say about them i suppose but they are very pretty and they're they stayed purple they stayed green they stayed beautiful they didn't close or crunch up i've never had a problem with drying wax flower in the microwave they always turn out really really pretty okay we're gonna move on to the anemone since the center is so thick i was getting a little bit of like a burn ring around the center so if we were to look at the other anemone the one that dried in the book it dried so much better because since i'm drying this in the microwave and i'm drying it like super fast the moisture of the center uh, made this like burn ring around the center because it was just too fast for how much moisture is in there so but the purple is really really pretty like the purple part of it stayed yeah. 
stunning. All right, so we are on to the last method, which was silica gel. I'm pretty excited to see this. Okay, so we've taken the flowers out of the silica gel and I wanna talk about the anemone first. So this guy probably should have taken him out much sooner. He probably would have done well with like three or four days because the petals are so thin. Since it was in for so long, it dried out a lot and it didn't completely fall apart, but look at it with that color. That is so beautiful. Like it kept all of its color basically center stayed like you said stayed 3d it's just this like beautiful purple color exactly how we put it in nothing changed about it because i feel like when you do silica gel that's probably where you're gonna get the most color and keep most of its like shape color like the exact tones that it is because the thicker and more moisture that a flower has obviously the longer it's gonna need in silica gel so this one didn't need to be in for as long as it was but when flowers kind of fall apart like this I usually don't care at all because as long as I have the petals if I put this into whatever project that I'm using it for I usually just lay the petals like right next to it and sort of fill in where they fell off and like tuck them under this is how I would put it in you wouldn't even really be able to tell that it fell apart with the little spray roses little rose buds like this are so freaking cute so this is what they look like after drying for six days in silica gel so with these since they're rosebuds and they're so tight you do want them to dry for a little bit i mean maybe not as long as i did they're totally fine like nothing fell apart uh, but since there's like such compact moisture you know it's not like spread out where the you know drying process is spread out since they're so compact and they're drying in silica gel like it kind of takes a little bit longer it kept most of its color if not all of it I love it and we get that little crunchy kind of texture it's like super super dry so with the little wax flowers is this not beautiful Cheers. is this not stunning beautiful perfection like it kept all of its shape it looks like a stem of wax flower that's like alive you know what I mean like it's but it's completely dry and like you could do anything with it. The purple obviously stayed. Some of them even have like a blue tone to them, I feel yeah. like. That came out super beautiful and I knew it would. So the tulip. I kept this one closed because with the other ones, we like opened them up. So I wanted to see what it would look like all closed up. And so this is what it looks like. It's kind of difficult to show. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> It's really pretty. It's really, really fragile. Maybe this one also could have been uh, better with less time. I was actually surprised by that because, you know, as we talked about, tulips are thick and they're waxy. So I thought it would need a good amount of time in silica gel to dry. But with that, it is really, really beautiful. The textures are like amazing. Last but not least, so beautiful the most magical stunning queen of the universe queen of the dried flowers look at the ruffle queen <laughs> look at her i know it's stunning it's still stunning <laughs> <laughs> but look kept her shape just it looks like a rose but it dried i can't remember if this is if this was more on the pink side because now it's definitely like taken some oranges and some reds like it is so beautiful yeah so drying roses in silica gel what, like top tier yeah. like absolutely beautiful gorgeous gorgeous and like it just kept its it kept its pizzazz it kept its like ruffles and its shape 
Shut up. All right, so let's get into the comparison shots. I'm going to show you guys what all the roses look like next to each other. All the like same type of flower. I'm going to line them up next to each other so you guys can kind of see what each like process produces. Right, you guys so I have talked for an eternity so I'm gonna let you go uh, I hope you guys took something away from this maybe you were like curious about like what you know certain methods would look like and if you have a certain project in mind like whatever you're working with maybe you figured out what uh, drying method is good for your project and that's it thank you guys so much for watching this video I really hope that you enjoyed it make sure you give this video a like subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram it is at artsy mad woman I love you guys to absolute death and i'll see you in the next video goodbye, goodbye.